Hello viewers, greetings to you and welcome to my channel. All right, today I want to show you how to size the solar panels that are needed to generate the energy that will be stored in the battery. Uh, in my last video, I showed you how to size the battery bank. Now, it is very important for you to know how to size the number of panels that will be able to generate the energy that will be stored in the battery bank. When you use the battery bank in the night and um, the next day it's, um, it has been drained, it has been discharged, it is highly recommended that you should refuel that battery, you should recharge that battery to 100%. The state of charge of that battery should be 100% at the end of the day before you start using it again. So I'm going to show you how to size the solar panels. Now our daily energy consumption from the example we have been using uh, is 2,542 watts hour. 2,542 watts hour. This is the daily energy consumption we have been using to size our, we used to size the battery bank. And that is what, this is what we we'll use to size the solar uh, panels. You can watch my previous videos on how we uh, got this value. Now we have the load analysis table uh, sizing the battery bank and today we are sizing the solar panels. Now to size the solar panels, there are a few things we need to take into consideration before we'll be able to appropriately size our solar panels. The first one, number one, is the, the inverter efficiency. The inverter efficiency. Uh, if you watch the free previous video, we use an efficiency of 90%, 0.9. And I told you that the efficiency of an inverter is the ability of the inverter to smoothly convert DC to AC without much losses and inverters efficiency ranges from 80 85 to up, up to 90 percent for good quality inverters for so for this calculation we are making use of uh, uh, 90 percent the second one uh, the second thing we are going to take into consideration is the performance ratio performance uh, ratio Now, uh, the performance ratio is different from uh, the efficiency of the solar panels. Now, the efficiency of the solar panels, we have efficiency ranging from 15% up to uh, 23%. Some manufacturers claim that uh, their panels have an efficiency of up to 30 something uh, percent. Now, when we say the efficiency of a solar panel, for example, is 23%, this is our this is our solar panel and this is the sun so if the sun if the solar panel uh, receives the sun's energy that is if this the, um, the so if sunlight heats on this uh, solar panel the solar panel will be able to convert 23 percent of the sun's energy that it receives into electrical energy in dc form so if it is rated 15 percent the cell efficiency of the solar panel is 15 percent it means uh, if it receives uh, sunshine, if you expose it to sun, it will be able to convert 15% of the sunlight into electrical energy also in DC form. But what we are talking here is the performance ratio, which is um, very different. Now, when you look at uh, the back of your solar panel, what we call the nameplate or the specification sheet of the solar panel, there's something you will see there. Uh, we have the irradiance. The irradiance is at 1000 watts per square meter. We also have the cell temperature of at uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Then we have the air mass at 1.5. Now this, this, uh, these uh, parameters are constant. They are called STC, standard test conditions. In other words, this panel, after manufacturing the panel, the manufacturer will uh, test the panel. And the parameters he will use are the uh, irradiance, temperature and air mass. These things are constant in the laboratory. So when they are constant at the back of the panel, for example, you will see things that are written there, Pmax. Let's assume this panel is 300 watts uh, panel. The maximum power of the panel is 300 watts. Then we have the VOC, which is the open circuit voltage. Let's assume the open circuit voltage is 40 volts. Then we also have another one, the short circuit current. Let's assume the short circuit current is nine amps. 
The next one is the VMPP. That's the maximum power, uh, maximum uh, uh, power uh, uh, voltage. Let's assume the VMPP uh, uh, is, let's say, 38 volts. And the maximum power current. The maximum power current is 8.5 amps. Now, what the manufacturer is letting you know is that if these conditions are kept constant, the irradiance at 1,000 watt per square meter, the cell temperature at 25 degrees, and the air mass at 1.5, the panel will be able to generate this parameter, will be able to generate 300 watts complete. Then the open circuit voltage and all other parameters will you know, be the same. But when you bring out this panel to the real life or real world situation, when you expose them to the um, uh, outside world, you remove them from the laboratory, we should know that these parameters are not constant. They are not things we can control. You cannot control the temperature from morning to night to make it constant at 25 degrees centigrade. You cannot control the uh, irradiance to be constant at 1,000 watts per meter square. These are parameters that are only controlled by God. We, we, we don't have absolute control over them. So when you are installing your solar panel, whether in the north, south, east, or west, you should know that, for example, I'm in southern Nigeria. Uh, these parameters cannot be the same with the person who is in northern Nigeria. They cannot be the same because the temperature there is different. The irradiance there is different. The air mass there is different. The climatic and weather conditions are different. So that is why we are introducing the performance ratio. And for this calculation, we are using 65%, which is the same as 0.65. That is what we are going to use for this calculation. What it means is that if you have a solar panel that is rated 300 watts, the panel can only generate 65% of its rated capacity, of its rated wattage. So this 300 watt panel can only generate 65% of its rated capacity. There are other good panels that uh, have performance ratio up to 70%, 75 or 80% or thereabout if you have good panels. So uh, you should know that if you go to the market and buy a 300 watt panel, never you expect that from, uh, um, from sunrise to sunset, that panel will constantly give you 300 watts. It is impossible. Even in the north, the irradiance is not constant. Even if it rises to 900 and something, or even 1,000 watts per square meter, it won't last long. At times, five minutes. At times, even three minutes, it will drop back to maybe 600 or 500. It fluctuates. It is not steady because of the weather conditions. So if you are designing a solar panels or a solar system, and you are sizing your solar panels, uh, and you think if you have a 300-watt panel or a 200-watt panel, it will be able to generate that exact amount of power uh, uh, every day constantly it is it is uh, practically impossible so that's why we have the performance ratio of a panel remember it is different from the cell uh, efficiency of the panel now if the efficiency of that panel is high the performance ratio of that panel will also be high a panel with a low cell efficiency will have a low performance ratio which is uh, the same as a uh, uh, p arrow then the third one is the peak sun hours. Peak sunshine hours. This is in hours. Now, the peak sunshine hours is the availability of sunshine in a particular location. How many hours does the sun last in your area per given day? So, some places it is 4.5 hours, some it is 5 hours, some uh, it, it can be up to 6 hours, depending on your location. So you also need to take the peak sunshine hours into consideration. Remember, the panels are the generators. They convert the sun's energy into electrical energy. So it is the amount of sunshine they receive, the amount of uh, solar energy they receive, that they will convert into electrical energy energy. So the amount or the availability of sunshine in your area will determine how, uh, how well those panels will be able to convert or the, the amount of energy the panels will be able to generate per given day. So uh, for the peak sun hours in northern Nigeria, in southern Nigeria, we have different 
hours. For this calculation, we are going to use five hours. So these are the factors you need to take into consideration before sizing a solar power system. I mean, uh, sizing your solar panels. So I'm going to show you using this daily energy consumption of 2,542 watt hour. I'm going to show you how you can size the solar panels that will generate this energy. All right, to size the number of solar panels, we have step one. The first step is that we are going to divide this value by the inverter efficiency. And remember, I told you we are going to use 90%, which is the same as 0 0.9. So step one, divide the daily energy consumption by the inverter efficiency. So this will be 2,542 divided by 0 0.9. This will give us 2,824.4 uh, watt hour. 2,824.4 watt hour. Now step, step two. We are going to divide this value. Divide step one. The result from step one by the performance ratio of the panel and the performance ratio i told you we are going to use 65 percent which is the same as 0 0.65 so this will be 2824.4 divide 0.65 so this uh, will give us um, 4345 345.4 uh, two, three. Then we have step three. We are going to divide this value, divide step two by the peak sun hours. So we are dividing this by the peak sun hours. So this will be 4,345.23. I told you we are going to use five as our peak sun hours, divide by five. So this will give us approximately 800 and 69. Now, step four, we are going to divide this value by the power rating of the panel we want to use. If you want to use a 150 watt panel, 200 watt panel, 300 watt panel, 400 watt panel, you will now divide this value by the power rating of the panel you want to use, you choose. Now, this will give you the number of solar panels that are needed. So for this calculation, we are going to use 320 watts panel. So if we, if we are using 320 watts, we will have 869 divided by 320. So this will give us, us 2.7. So approximately, this will be three panels. So we are having three solar panels of, three, of uh, 320 watts. So this is how to calculate the number of solar panels that are needed to you know, generate the energy that will be stored in your battery. Thank you for watching. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to size the charge controller and the inverter using um, uh, the, the number of solar panels we have here. We'll be able to size our charge controller by looking at the parameters, the specification of a 300 and 20 watt panel. Then from the uh, power rating, the total power of our loads will be able to size the inverter. So if you enjoy the teaching, you enjoy the video, please subscribe to my channel and uh, so that you, uh, you'll be able to get more videos from me and also turn on your not notification after the subscription. Thank you very much for watching. See you in my next video.